One day, in retrospect, the years of struggle will strike you as the most beautiful. Being entirely honest with oneself is a good exercise. Most people do not really want freedom because freedom involves responsibility, and most people are frightened of responsibility. Unexpressed emotions will never die. They are buried alive and will come forth later in uglier ways. We are never so defenseless against suffering as when we love. Out of your vulnerabilities will come your strength. Where does a thought go when it's forgotten? He that has eyes to see and ears, to hear make convince himself that no mortal can keep a secret if his lips are silent. He chatters with his fingertips, betrayal oozes out of him at every pore. A woman should soften but not weaken a man. Religious doctrines are all illusions. They do not admit a proof and no one can be compelled to consider them as true or to believe in them. It is impossible to escape the impression that people commonly use false standards of measurement, that they seek power, success, and wealth for themselves and admire them in others, and that they underestimate what is of true value in life. Everywhere I go I find a poet has been there before me. In so doing, the idea forces itself upon him that religion is comparable to a childhood neurosis, and he is optimistic, enough to suppose that mankind will surmount this neurotic phase, just as so many children grow out of their similar neurosis. In the depths of my heart I can't help being condensed that, my dear fellow men, with a few exceptions, are worthless. Whoever loves becomes humble. Those who love have, so to speak, pawned a part of their narcissism. Immorality, no less than morality, has at all times found support in religion. The madman is a dreamer awake. No, our science is no illusion, but an illusion it would be to suppose that what science cannot give us, it can get elsewhere. Religion is a system of wishful, illusions together with a disavowal of reality, such as we find nowhere else. But in a state of blissful hallucinatory confusion, religion's eleventh commandment is thou shalt not question. The virtuous man contents himself with dreaming that which the wicked man does in actual life. It is that we are never so defenseless against suffering as when we love never so helplessly and happy as when we have lost our love object or its love. Religion is an illusion and it derives its strength from the fact that it falls in with our instinctual desires. The behavior of a human being in sexual matters is often a prototype for the whole of his other modes of reaction in life. He does not believe that does not live according to his belief. Where the questions of religion are concerned, people are guilty of every possible kind of insincerity and intellectual misdemeanor. America is a mistake, a giant mistake. Neurotics complain of their illness, but they make the most of it and when it comes to taking it away from them, they will defend it like a lioness or young. 
Duty has no obvious use, nor is there any clear cultural necessity for it. Yet civilization could not do without it. My love is something valuable to me which I ought not to throw away without reflection. The intention that man should be happy is not in the plan of creation. Men are more moral than they think and far more immoral than they can imagine. Love and work are the cornerstones of our humanness. The creative writer does the same as the child at play. He creates a world of fantasy which he takes very seriously. Properly speaking, the unconscious is the real psychic. Its inner nature is just as unknown to us as the reality of the external world. And it is just as imperfectly reported to us through the data of consciousness as is the external world through the indications of our sensory organs. What progress we are making in the Middle Ages they would have burned me. Now they are content with burning my books. The more the fruits of knowledge become accessible to men, the more widespread is the decline of religious belief. Loneliness and darkness have just robbed me of my valuables. The interpretation of dreams is the royal road to a knowledge of the unconscious activities of the mind. A man should not strive to eliminate his complexes, but to get into accord with them. They are legitimately what directs his conduct in the world. Where ID is, there shall ego be. When a love relationship is at its height, there is no room left for any interest in the environment. A pair of lovers are sufficient to themselves. Poets are masters of us ordinary men in knowledge of the mind, because they drank at streams which we have not yet made accessible to science. How bold one gets when one is sure of being loved. The ego is not master in its own house. Neurosis is the inability to tolerate ambiguity. Men are strong so long as they represent a strong idea. They become powerless when they oppose it. A love that does not discriminate seems to me to forfeit a part of its own value by doing an injustice to its object. And secondly, not all men are worthy of love. Illusions commend themselves to us because they save us pain and allow us to enjoy pleasure instead. We must therefore accept it without complaint when they sometimes collide with a bit of reality against which they are dashed to pieces. Instinct of love toward an object demands a mastery to obtain it. And if a person feels they can't control the object or feel threatened by it, they act negatively toward it. It goes without saying that a civilization which leaves so large a number of its participants unsatisfied and drives them into revolt neither has nor deserves the prospect of a lasting existence. It is a predisposition of human nature to consider an unpleasant idea untrue, and, and it is easy to find arguments against it. No neurotic harbors thoughts of suicide, which are not murderous, impulses against others redirected upon himself. There are no mistakes.